three hours they kept an art track. So is there any way of keeping an art track? See, already the questions have been seen. It is very difficult. Somebody would have been very fast. Somebody would have been very slow. That we reusing the question paper will not work. We will come up with some solution. Don't worry. Nobody will lose anything. Definitely, we'll take it on. Okay. Okay, students. We will continue with the examples now. Um, so this Hello. is what I was telling. Yes. No, Regarding this, no more uh, clarifications required now. I think I have clarified everything. We will come up with something. Uh, you wait till that. Okay. We need some time. Without seeing the status, we cannot conclude or we cannot announce right now. So we want some time to see that. We will go through the responses of everybody and then what is missing. And what what is the maximum you could attend? We will see that, and we will get back to you. Okay. Yeah. No so more. we will continue no this. Who is that? Please mute, students. Please mute. Okay, this particular example I wanted to show using the access link and the display. In the last class, I had told the sort is a function, uh, which is a program now, and we have a global array A and we have uh, the global variable say X, which is of type integer, and then we have certain procedures like read array, we have procedure exchange, we have procedure say quick sort. Within the procedure quick sort, we have the function say partition, and within the partition function, we are calling uh, the procedure exchange. Okay, so this is what is the program. Now, for this particular program, uh, anyway, this particular program is not a complete code. It is only having the skeleton where uh, the names of the uh, functions, names of the procedures, uh, names of the variables are there. That's all. And what is calling what? Only that information is there. If at all you complete the code also, it works similarly, anyways. So, with this, we will continue. Uh, how the display uh, will look like, I will show in the next two slides. So uh, th this is what is uh, the uh, access uh, provided for uh, for each of the variables, for each of the function, and how the activation record is created, and how it is uh, accessed using display. Uh, these are the snapshots. So this is the global uh, display uh, array where you will track all the all the addresses. Uh, for the uh, different uh, levels. So D of one, D, in my previous examples, I had shown it as level zero, level one, level two, something like that. So instead of calling that, uh, we can also have D of one, D of two, D of three, something like this. So it will have the length for each of this cell and um, that is nothing but the length of the pointer. Uh, it will uh, go to that particular level and it will access. So starting with the main uh, function that is the sort uh, we are calling sort that is the program name so first it will start with that and the base address of d that is d of 1 will be used so it will call that function and inside sort we have uh, two global um, uh, declarations that is for array a and x that, that is also saved as you see here that is uh, in the first snapshot coming to the second snapshot is uh, after the activation record is created for sort so the next thing is uh, we are going to uh, make the first call inside the sort program. That is a quick sort of one comma nine. Uh, this is what we have called. So it will be creating another activation record uh, where now sort uh, is also active and next activation record is created. That is quick sort of one comma nine. And within this, all of you mute students. Within this quick sort of one comma nine, we have some local variables a, k, and b. That is what uh, we have saved that also. Uh, and here, whatever is essential, that is shown, but everything will be saved. Like uh, the architecture of, or the uh, organization of the activation record, whatever you say when, when it is called, no, that everything is done. But only the main things uh, is shown here because we are only dealing with uh, how to make use of the display. Uh, but all the contents will be saved, like the return address, everything will be saved all the parameters, like how uh, usually it happens, the same way it happens now also. Uh, so coming to the next call is what after the quick sort of one comma nine is called later, it will be quick sort of one comma three using the strategy divide and conquer strategy, it will happen. Uh, and notice that we are also saving uh, 
now once you go to the next activation record this d of 2 will will point to that and that address is saved and it will point to the previous um, activation record means uh, whenever you are calling something when it goes in there it has to also access the previous uh, activation records so that provision is uh, given uh, both in the access link as well as in the display array that's why this back link is given so that you have access to those um, variables also and coming to the next part is what uh, next we are going to call the partition so uh, all these are existing all these are active till you pop out everything will be active now quick sort of 1 comma 3 we have saved something and then now partition has been called so new activation record is created so um, similarly the uh, uh, pointers are also updated in the display array it will point so you can see some dotted lines and you can see some thick lines dotted lines are there active it means we are not at return and we are calling the new function and it goes like this it goes like this once you are done with the exchange now it will pop because it is going to return something so it is going to pop and then uh, the in the next snapshot you can see it will pop even the quick sort of 1 comma 3 then finally it will uh, pop a quick sort of 1 comma 9 and then uh, sort also because that is the program it will end that program then everything goes okay so um, it looks like this finally uh, uh, everything is whatever has been called everything is taken out the stack becomes empty the activation records will not be there uh, and that's it so in this way the display will work a uh, display uh, is a global uh, array uh, which is used to track and to provide access to the non local uh, elements uh, when we are using the uh, series of uh, function calls okay so uh, when 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 you call it will create when you return it will it will deallocate so th that procedure is same only thing is that now how we are providing access only that we are dealing with so one of the way is using the uh, display mechanism okay so uh, similarly we have the other mechanism that is using the access links as you all know access links are of two types static link and the dynamic link in my previous example that is in the last class i had shown how the static link and the dynamic links are updated static link will be used whenever the nested structure is used and dynamic link is used whenever the calling sequence is used so those are updated every time when the new activation records are created the stack pointer and the frame pointer are also updated the same thing happens here also now so uh, the series of uh, calls whatever i showed in the previous uh, snapshot similar only thing is the names we are using short names here that's all so sort and then access link is uh, provided array a and x also can be saved here and then quick sort of 1 comma 9 is uh, called and then all the local variables will be saved then access link is updated so that it points to the caller also and similarly the next call is q of 1 comma 3 so uh, the pointers are updated you see it is from the previous and uh, from the current uh, activation record uh, to the sort also it is giving uh, uh, the uh, link back link so that you have access to that that is either the parent or the caller uh, it should have the access so that is provided so here it, it is not mentioned whether it is a static link or the dynamic link so based on what kind of program you are using whether it is more nested or whether it is nested as well as it is having the calling sequence you have sequence of calls based on that you will be making use of both the links that is the static link and the dynamic link so anyway here we are using the general term access link it means that both both possibilities are there that is the static link and the dynamic link both will be updated so like this it goes and um, as you observe here uh, uh, when you use the access links uh, to access the uh, non local data it will have to use a chain of uh, uh, links like uh, if i want to access uh, something uh, from uh, q of 1 comma 9 then i have to use uh, the back link from the current uh, current activation record to the previous and then from there i have to go back in the last class i had shown a very typical example using the frame pointer how to access the variables a similar concept is used here also uh, that is will be using the chain of access links to access anything uh, that is existing in the activation records so that is provided either it can be the ancestors that is a parent or uh, uh, or the callers uh, caller to caller if it is too much of uh, nested uh, in the that is the depth is more 
uh, in the following sequence and it has not returned from any of the function and similarly the recursive functions also uh, till it returns everything is available so you can access uh, anything which has been already created and which is existing using these means so in this way it works so uh, there are mechanisms to definitely uh, make use of the non local data also means once the procedure is called once the active once the activation record is created you have all the data available in the stack frame till it is going to return so that's about these two mechanisms you can go through these a little later also uh, coming to one more possibility is that there are some languages like ml which stands for uh, meta language and there is another language is scheme where in these kind of languages uh, these are known as functional languages a lot of features exist in these kind of languages and sometimes what happens uh, you you use the stack uh, for the activation record creation and it will return but after some time if you want to make use of the same value it is not available in the stack because you have already returned from that function like if i take this particular case i will not go in depth for this example because i just wanted to tell you about heaps that's it so here uh, suppose i want to have i want to call some function say z is equal to f of 4 means i want to call f of 4 and uh, whatever is returned that value i want to save it in z and then also i want to have one more call uh, say z of 5 and uh, i want to save it uh, in in some variable say w and also uh, note that this when i when i call z of 5 it will be making use of all the variables that are, that were there existing in the function f and if function is having another function say g that also it will use something like this some situation is there so once you call what happens it will it will create the activation record for the corresponding call like f of 4 i have called it will create the frame like this and whatever variables are there it will save also with the value it will save and once it is done with the function it will return once it returns what happens the stack becomes empty okay now what happens so that is step 2 means my stack is empty now now i have another call say z of 5 which is depending on the values of f of 4 it is not just the returned value whatever variable i used in f of 4 that is required but now i have lost the value of x it is not available because we have popped from the stack so that is lost but now i want to make use of that x value for my computation uh, within the function is z then what happens i have the value of y but if suppose i want to compute x plus y then x value is also required so that is not available means uh, what happens here if i use a stack the lifetime is limited because of that once it returns i i am not able to get the values later if the same values if the same variables and uh, with the same attributes if i want to use i don't have that in my stack frame now that is in the activation record so what we have to do then we we can't just depend on the stack in that case okay we will have to depend on something called heaps so heap is another data structure that is used where this is a requirement uh, for some particular languages to make use of some features where the lifetime is extended even after the uh, function is executed so i return from the function but i want to make use of those data even after the function execution then we will depend on the heaps okay uh, anyway in our syllabus we are not covering the heaps so i just wanted to mention the difference between the stack and the heaps this is important because anywhere maybe some, somebody may ask question if it is dynamic then what will you do so you should be knowing uh, the answer is heaps because the lifetime is not limited and if you want to retain the data you can retain how long you want to retain you can, yes you can retain or you can only uh, give explicitly okay now you deallocate me still then it can be allocated and it can be saved in the memory either you have to give an instruction to uh, deallocate or you should have a strategy or mechanism to implicitly deallocate so that is left to you like how you use and what programming language you use and uh, whether that that is supported by that language these features are supported based on that it will happen so it depends upon what input you take and what is that you are looking forward based on that it will be uh, used anyway heap structure also can be used where there is no limitation 
you can access the data, uh, non-local data at any time till it is available in the uh, memory. So that's about the heap. Uh, only this I wanted because Vishnu and I think some more people had ha asked this kind of examples. I had to put uh, this example. Uh, okay, in this particular example, what is happening? We have a, a procedure main and within the procedure main, we have F1. Uh, and we have F2, we have uh, F3, we have F4. Um, so first thing is, if you want to uh, find the lexical or the static scope, uh, that is at compile time, everything you know, and based on the structure of your code, uh, you'll be able to find the static coordinate. And therefore, you will have to uh, see the nesting relationship. So the nesting relationship looks like this. So main within that, we have one independent, that is, within main we have f1 within main we have f2 and within f2 we have f3 and that begins and ends and similarly within uh, f2 we have f4 also okay so that's why this uh, kind of graph has been created for this graph now we have to see how to find the static coordinates so um, uh, main when you start it will be at zero and once you uh, enter the main uh, like a b c will be uh, declared in within the main Therefore, all these uh, you have to find the static coordinate because you know the importance of static coordinate. If you have the static coordinate directly, you can access that particular variable using this static coordinate or dynamic coordinate also. Okay, so uh, whatever is within the main, I consider it as level one. So level one, A, B, C are there. So with the offset of zero, four, and eight respectively, A, B, C will be created, and uh, these are the coordinates. Now coming to F one. Uh, because uh, it is in the next level, uh, you are going to increase the level of uh, le level to uh, two now uh, for F1. So level will be two for all uh, for A and B. Why? Because within the procedure F1, we have only A, B. So A, B, uh, it is going to use level uh, two. Uh, C is not redeclared, so it will be using the previous uh, um, scope only. So it will be one comma eight only. It is retained. Whereas for A, B, the offset also will be accordingly, it will be like A is um, the first one, so it is zero, and for B, it is four. So coming to uh, F2, uh, coming to F2, it is also at level two, because within main, I use level one. So once I enter F1, it will be at level two. Similarly, once I enter F2, it will be at level two. So uh, within F2, what are the variables that are declared Y and Z? So for Y and Z, I'll be using the levels as two, and the offsets also accordingly you are going to uh, make it. Uh, what about then uh, ABC? ABC will be uh, at the same scope uh, as main. As main means whatever scope I had used for main, the same scope is repeated for F2. So then coming to F3, within F3 we have two variables, say M and N. So for M and N, you are going to increase the uh, level. Uh, so it becomes three. Uh, and uh, uh, for both and uh, with the offset say 0 and 4 in that sequence. And now what about uh, YZ? It will use the previous scope that is f 2 scope it is going to use. And what about ABC? ABC will be of the same scope that is uh, like main okay? because we have not redeclared. Okay. And then um, coming to F4 also it is similar. It is not visible because it's not full screen. Maybe. Okay, now you can see, I think. Uh, so F4 also is similar for M and N. Uh, it will be in the same level because F2 was using uh, level uh, level two. So within F4, uh, we are supposed to use level uh, level three. So for M and N, it will be level three. And whereas the others will um, will follow the either the F2 uh, scope or uh, if it is not redeclared, it will use the main scope. So like this, it works. Uh, similarly, I have the I have the uh, dynamic scope also. I will explain and leave it, okay? Because again, to come back to this, it's very difficult. Another one minute I will take and I will tell. You go through the slides. If you have any doubts, let me clarify in the next class maybe, okay? So uh, same way we can have the calling relationships. Uh, main is calling F1. So main is calling F1. And then once it enters F1, it is calling F2. Uh, once it enters F2, uh, the body of F2, you have to see, uh, once it calls F2, uh, it will call F3 first, then F3 will uh, will uh, uh, go back, that is, it will return, and then it will call F4. So, uh, so that's how it works. Uh, 
that is the calling relationship you can see the diagram and then coming to the dynamic coordinates based on uh, the uh, caller the uh, based on the caller the uh, scope will change so main as usual it will not change it is uh, one only uh, like uh, the previous case and in f1 uh, it will change the uh, level for uh, both a and b because the, those have been redeclared whereas for c it is the same and coming to f2 uh, f2 uh, we have we don't have uh, a b c therefore it will remain in the same scope whereas for y z it has to use the new scope so see the depth that's why i have marked 1 2 3 uh, so within f2 it it will enter into the level 3 so level 3 uh, and the offsets are 0 4 for y and z uh, and coming to f3 uh, f3 is uh, it will enter into level 4 for m and n whereas the others will remain uh, with the same scope like the caller scope uh, so uh, m and n will have uh, the offset of 0 and 4 um, again it is not visible so coming to f4 uh, f3 returns uh, back to f2 and then f4 is called uh, so for m and n once again in f4 uh, you are going to have uh, the um, new uh, that is uh, the level will be 4 uh, with the offset 0 and 4 Uh, rest all uh, will follow uh, same like f2 because for f4 the caller is f2 so it will be following the f2 uh, scope so i think uh, if you see this slide you will understand anyway you trace and try to understand very well and then if you still have doubts maybe i will repeat in the next class for now i will finish this uh, there are two more examples that you can easily understand you can see that once if you have understood this concept then that is easy just go through it uh, let me know if you have any doubts okay okay students thank you already it's time i am taking more time um any doubts let me know by the next class okay